All right, we now welcome in ESPN's Rini Angolia and Mike Cousins. First of all, for the both of you, when you found out that ESPN wanted you to attend American Media Day in Newport, I mean, how upset were you about this? I said, you're paying me to go there? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is not a vacation. It's a work trip, <laughs> but it feels like it. New England in the summertime with a clam bake, you, you can't beat it, Rini. Well, I said I would do it for the lobster, and they just took the lobster off, so oh, I'm ready yeah. to go. There it is <laughs> there right it there. There it is, yeah. You can see them hauling the corn and the bugs and all that stuff in there. In New England, they call it bugs. I mean, I know that you guys may be from different parts. You, uh, I don't even want to get into uh, it. With, from with everywhere. You. Yeah, you are from everywhere, for crying out loud. Hey, let's look at this American Athletic Conference. Look, you have UCF that's strong. Yeah. Navy took it on the chin last year. They may be able to bounce back. Charlie Strong at USF, they start off 7-0. and Who are the teams, Rainey, that you think? Give me a couple that you've got your eye on to start the year that you think could have big seasons here in the American. Well, UCF, I think, is kind of like the bully, right? And so someone's got to step up and knock them off. I, I, I still like UCF. Cincinnati's the team that can do it, okay? They, they get UCF at home this year. Uh, they start with UCLA. They go to Ohio State, to Cincinnati. So they got a tough beginning. But they're the team, I think, in the East that can knock UCF off. Uh, the West, I think Memphis, they're a battler. Coach Mike Norvell always has his teams ready to play. Uh, the one that really intrigues me is Houston because I think Dana Holgerson's going to step right in there. He's loaded with talent. Uh, De'Ara King is Back. I mean, the kid had 50 total touchdowns in 11 games. That's the team uh, that scares me in the West. I, mean, I, I was telling Mike Cousins earlier, my sleeper team in the conference, though, you're not going to believe it, is Tulane. Watch out for Tulane and Willie Fritz. I just think <laughs> they're at that verge of, of, of turning a page, and I think they're going to compete as well in the conference. Rini, Mike, you both have called several games across the American over the past few years. Mike, how much has this league grown over the course of their time covering it? It's been a ton because I think that you have seen a lot of coaches come and go, which is a compliment to the league and just how good the schools are that other conferences say, like, this guy's really good. Look at what he's built with this program. But then the coaches you have coming in now to this conference as well, Dana Holgerson is going to inject a ton of personality. He's always recruited a lot of talent. Rod Carey, I got yeah. the, the privilege of doing a lot of games with Northern Illinois over the last several years. For a small school outside of Chicago, he recruited some great players and I, that is what I love. The attention that this league gets as well, I think, still is not enough because some of the teams and some of the players that come out of this league are so good. And when you see those games like down at UCF and the stadium shaking, like those are exciting. And no matter where you go, whatever the school is around the conference, the enthusiasm from those fan bases is all so high. Mike, I'm glad you mentioned Temple because I think it's a testament to where the league has come three straight years now, or, th or three hires now. Temple has been able to get some really good football coaches, and like you said, Mike, Northern Illinois has produced a lot of guys yeah. that have gone on to big-time jobs. Now people are looking at these jobs in the American and saying, these are good jobs. There's a lot of funding. There's a lot of support, and Temple now has got some history. Well, and talking about Temple, Andy, four straight years they've gone to bowl games. So they've been able to do that with a turnover of head coaches. So I think Rod Carey, great coach, is going to step in there. They're talented. He's going to hit the ground running. It's a great program. And just to echo on what Mike said, you know, I do the bulk of uh, my games for ESPN or American Athletic Conference, and I just really believe on the national level the conference does not get the recognition from top to bottom as it deserves. Yes, UCF gets a lot of credit, and, and rightfully so, but I think the conference on a whole – kind of gets the shaft in the national media. And, Rini, when you talk about the bowl history at Temple, prior to those four years, what they've done recently paired, paired uh, with the history of Temple football is really impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I think Temple has been to eight bowl games right. altogether, mm -hmm. and four of those uh, coming in the last four years. Mike touched on the enthusiasm of the fan bases around this conference. And, Rini, I believe you live down in Orlando, so right in UCF yeah. country. <laughs> How has that fan base grown and emerged over the past couple of years and really gotten behind that program and maybe even developed a love for college football? Yeah, I think it's huge, and I, I think it started with the on-campus stadium. You know, they played in the Citrus Bowl, which was about a 25-minute drive from campus. Uh, they built the bounce house on, on campus, and that's really, really helped them. And uh, their fan base is, is, is growing in numbers. And obviously, uh, if you're on Twitter, you think their fan base is 10 times bigger <laughs> than it is. I mean, they're very passionate about their football, and, and that's what you love about college football. You love the banter back and forth, and, uh, you know, that's the passion you like and, and you love to see. Let me tell you 
the passion that I love to see. When I was in Rhode Island, you know what I you heard all the time? You have to settle this. Just settle it. Get it out of your system. Go, yeah. I mean, all we, I'm telling you, this guy ran for like 323 yards against my Rhode Island team in 94, and I have nightmares. I could say to my teammates, oh, yeah, I saw Rainy Angolia, and you know what they'll do? Like that dadgum PA guy, Rainy Angolia, well, 323 and four just, touchdowns. Just don't I, ask him where UMass got picked to finish in the Phil Steele oh, magazine. Oh, here we go. Oh, my gosh. Oh, dead last. Dead last. <laughs> yeah, but he's got a banner hanging on the stadium, so he's got nothing to complain about. About. When you're running for 323 against the scrubs that I played for, See, you know? I got to take you home, Andy, because my kids don't want to listen to me at all. <laughs> they don't care that I played. They, they don't want to listen, but I appreciate it. The glory days. The glory, the glory days. days. Yes. Yeah. He could have gone to Syracuse if you didn't get hurt. There you go. Um, See, Mike knows the story, too. I'm going to have to continue uh, counseling Gresh throughout the season. It's like all I've heard about today. So yeah. I don't know what you did to him, but I'm glad that uh, you guys Sports got PTSD. that out of your system.